So over the past few months, I've developed what some would call an unhealthy obsession with Facebook Marketplace. I have found all of my favorite items for my home on Facebook Marketplace for amazing prices and nothing makes me more excited than that. So I've started to care a little bit more about my interior design and what I do to my home. I haven't always prioritized getting nice stuff for my house as much as I have recently. With my new love of interior design also came a love of vintage furniture and vintage inspired design. I've always loved mid-century and other eras that I can take inspiration from but I try not to choose just one era. I want my space to feel like an amalgamation of all of my taste so that it's truly my style. I'm not just copying someone else and I'm not just copying one era. So this one was actually described as a vintage record stand slash side table. I got this little piece for $35. I really love how petite it is. The Surrealism coffee table book I got at a used bookstore in town. And then this vase is another Facebook Marketplace find. I bundled that vintage vase and a little hardwood bowl for $25. This is what I'm dealing with. Oh my god. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> A big inspiration for me is Paige Wassel. I have been watching her channel for the past year or so. Not only do I love her taste, but I think she has really good advice for finding furniture at fair prices. Um, but I kind of want to elaborate on that. So there's a little bit of a learning curve to figuring out how to get the best stuff on Facebook, but I think I've finally figured it out. Because I'm not gonna lie, Facebook Marketplace is the dog-eat-dog -dog world. It is ruthless and <laughs> Fast. The vast majority of my items I have seen listed and have purchased them and they are in my home by the end of the day. The biggest piece of advice I would give if you want to start buying more furniture on Facebook is to make the purchase as easy as possible for the seller. And this especially is important if the item has been listed within the past day because quality items that are priced inexpensively are going to be gone like that and you've gotta jump on it as soon as you see it. That's why it's so important to have an idea of a piece that you want before you go looking for it so that as soon as you see it, you know that's what I've been looking for and you can message them and you can pick it up. What you wanna do is keep a list of items that you either wanna replace in your home or you need for your home in your phones so that you always have it with you. And what I would recommend, have the dimensions for the space that you want that item in your phone so that when you're out and about or bored at the doctor's office and you're scrolling through Facebook Marketplace, you can tell whether that item will fit in your space or not and you might be able to get it faster than somebody else. Buying things in a day can seem like impulse buying to the people around you. Um, <laughs> I have had them be concerned about that. However, I don't consider it an impulse buy even if you see the item and buy it within the hour but it's been on your list for a few weeks, you already know that that's something that you're gonna want long term. For example, my credenza I was looking for for two months before I found the perfect one, and as soon as I saw it posted, I messaged her and we had picked it up by the end of the day. 
So this credenza is one of my more expensive Facebook Marketplace purchases. I got this piece for $450. This one was described on Facebook as mid-century Danish teak credenza by Hundevad. So this one was a little bit more specific for the style and it gave a lot more information on the vintage maker of the item. I think that's probably why it was priced a little bit higher. However, I do think that I still got a really good price on it. You can find pieces like this on Cherish for like two grand, so. The inset handles I think are so cool and I really like that it's all one color so it's a very cohesive piece that I think is going to stay classic for quite a while. It allows for so much storage but in a concealed way. This is also what I currently utilize as a TV stand. Ideally I'm going to mount the TV and be able to put a little bit more decor on top of here because it really does have a beautiful top. Since this is a mid-century piece that wasn't intended to be a TV stand in this way, I had to drill a hole in the back of it. I just used a one and a half inch drill bit and that allowed me to thread all the cords that I needed through the back. I found this table described as a two-tiered side table. You can also find this specific design under the name Lou Hodges. Um, that's not how I found it on Facebook, but I had previously saved this table in like a walnut and when I found it, it was $100. So I really did luck out. Now I will say it's not in absolute perfect condition. There's a slight chip on one of the edges of the glass. It's like tiny though. Um, and there are a couple scratches, but a lot of the flaws with it, um, it was just really grimy. So I just gave it a good scrub and I think it looks pretty good. I don't really have an issue with buying flawed items. I think it can kind of relieve the anxiety of buying a new piece and worrying that you're gonna fuck it up because if there's already a small flaw with it it takes away that anxiety because it's already not perfect maybe that's just me i don't know <laughs> so this table was actually our first facebook marketplace find we really lucked out with this one we were buying from a family who was just growing in size and they needed a bigger table, so we got theirs. This piece is solid wood. I'm not 100% sure where the table is from, but I know that the chairs are crate and barrel, and for the entire set, chairs and table included, we paid $500, which I think is a pretty good deal. This is one of the pieces that is not vintage. I believe these were purchased new by the original owner, but I still do really love the design. There's definitely some flaws in this piece. This is something that would be really easy to refinish if I wanted to because there's not really any flaws in the veneer. The issue is more so with the finish coming off of it, but I don't personally mind that. It makes me less anxious to use it when it's a little bit messy. of my favorite finds are these glasses. They did come in a set of 30. I am currently only using four of the martini glasses, but I felt that it was such a good price I might as well just buy the whole set because they were authentic 70s vintage Libby glasses in this kind of smoked glass. My friend Riley and I have been very into smoked glass after finding a very cute set of smoked glass vintage Pyrex bowls when we were antiquing. So, she got the bowls. I found these on Facebook a couple days after. This set also came with these adorable cordial glasses and wine glasses. I just haven't decided what I want to do with these yet. I don't have room for them in my kitchen right now, so right now they're just in storage until I decide if I want to keep them or sell them. And 
and I could talk about this stuff all day, so if you've got any questions, please comment. See ya! Bye-bye!